Hello, I'm uh, Brian Weinstein, and uh, uh, I'm the head of corporate finance at Creative Artists Agency, and we're here to talk about the economics of comedy. I think there's one thing we know is that no one on this stage is funny <laughs> at all, um, but I think I could probably name the order, and I think I'd be at the bottom. I haven't been funny since before high school, I think. Um, so it, just to get started, if uh, everyone can just uh, introduce themselves real quickly, um, and I think... Uh, you know, just add a little bit about some of the stuff you've been up to most recently uh, in, your, in your current jobs, particularly as it relates to the world of comedy. So, Evan, if you can start off. Uh, first of all, I'll take uh, umbrage. I, I consider myself funny, although my kids don't. <laughs> um, uh, my name's Evan Shapiro. I am president of IFC. With regards to the comedy, um, we're really investing all of our original programming dollars in comedy. Um, so we started the, our li life as the independent film channel. Um, we are now IFC. Um, we still run film, a tremendous amount of it, but we're concentrating on shows um, like one we do with Broadway Video called Portlandia, which recently relaunched to a, a pretty good second season. Todd Margaret with David uh, Cross and Will Arnett. Um, we have two, uh, a bunch of other really great shows coming later in the year, including Comedy Bang Bang with Scott Aukerman and um, other shows uh, um, that we'll talk about during the course of the panel. Uh, I'm Dick Lover, the president and CEO of Funny or Die. Um, and that we basically sort of look at ourselves as a uh, full-service comedy studio, if you will, with production, distribution, sales, marketing, etc. Best known probably for the website, but also produced television shows, had a film that premiered at Sundance past Friday, and uh, essentially will cr create content and distribute across whatever medium uh, uh, available. Uh, I'm Jack Sullivan and uh, I'm CEO of uh, Broadway Video Entertainment and our main business is really producing comedy. Uh, our our kind of core business within that is uh, television where we produce SNL and Late Night with Jimmy Fallon, 30 Rock and Portlandia and, and shows along those lines. <clears throat> We've been focusing quite a bit in the last uh, year on digital content as well and leveraging our relationships with our various writers and talent to produce uh, short form and we'll do some long form uh, content in that space as well. Hey everybody, Drew Buckley, I'm the Chief Operating Officer of Electus. Um, independent studio focused a lot on digital and television in the digital space. A uh, studio partner of ours is College Humor, which is a destination site uh, really focused on comedy. We also have a strategic venture with Will Arnett and Jason Bateman called Dumb Dumb. It seems like Will's worked with all of us. He's <laughs> getting paid. He's getting paid. He's getting paid. Um, and uh, we really work with a lot with advertisers and in the digital sphere about kind of taking intellectual property and how we can maximize it for uh, different distribution. Great. So one of, the, um, one of the things we're all dealing with is how to monetize uh, any piece of comedy content once it succeeds in some form. I think historically uh, there's been a challenge because comedy tends to not travel that well internationally. So we've seen new distribution systems, Netflix, Hulu, and otherwise emerge uh, and hopefully take place uh, of what was always a lost revenue stream internationally. So let's start with the basics there. Dick, maybe you can talk about some of the stuff that you think has worked for you. Um, and, uh, you know, whether it's Two Ferns or, or anything else that Funny or Die has produced and how you might monetize that after you say, hey, lots of people like this. Uh, we were talking on the way over, it would be a lot easier if we knew before we made something that it was going to be a big hit and we could sell it as a big hit. You mean you don't, you don't know? Um, we, we do know, but it's, you know, secret sauce we can't share, unfortunately. <laughs> Thanks. Um, but the, for us, there are a number of ways to, to use the word monetize um, content. First and foremost is an aggregation of audience, which is what all of us do to some degree, that, that you get enough eyeballs and you sell those eyeballs to, to advertisers, a fairly standard business. Uh, then I think all of us deal with working directly with advertisers and, and creating content with them, in our case, that's funny, that appeals to our audience, is consistent with our brand and uh, uh, getting paid by the advertisers uh, for the production and distribution and marketing uh, of that content. Uh, then we also, and I think all of us have the same business, will syndicate out, you know, so it's not just our website, but we'll sell the content to other uh, distributors. And then uh, the last is 
if you will, it's, it's almost a standard work for hire model where again, a, a network will give us a license fee to produce a show. Uh, in our case, what we're trying to do is work with people to not just be a producer, but to leverage all the assets we have, the social media, the audience, the brand, to be able to make it successful for us and, and for the network or the distributor. So Dick, you spoke about the advertiser as a key part of the process. You're selling to television with a license fee, but on the internet it's primarily advertiser driven. So as a follow-up question, Drew, um, how do you draw the line with comedy, which often the more inappropriate you are can sometimes be the funnier? How do you draw that line when you have to appeal to an advertiser but at the same time make people laugh? Well, it's tough. I mean, it, it's not that clear cut. I mean, there are certain advertisers that are bought into the premise that their brand needs to be associated with comedy. Um, and that's always good because you know they have, they, they know how it is to work with comedians and, and that elk. Uh, but it's never easy, um, and, and you know we just recently did a campaign with Will and, and Jason Dum Dum with Denny's, who really has never really tackled the comedy area, um, but we were able to do it in a unique setting where it's a talk show set, set in a Denny's, and at no time do the characters talk about moons over Miami or what have you, uh, but it is, it's, a, it's a talk show set in a Denny's, and that's it, and they bought into that premise. But a lot of times it's just, you know, the advertisers, the beauty is, is kind of setting up a company like Dum Dum and working with College Humor is that the advertisers do want to get closer to the content, which is great, but they also uh, have to understand that it has to be authentic to the core and being authentic to the core may not make them feel a lot of times comfortable with the messaging. So it's a slippery slope sometimes, but um, you, you always, hopefully, if everybody's bought into the same goal of making something good that, that gets an audience and grows, that that there is going to be a, a, a meeting of the minds. So, Jack, with, uh, with decades of, of production uh, at Broadway Video, I assume you know, when you walk into a room with an advertiser, there's probably a level of comfort that, that they have with Broadway Video to start. Um, and you know, how does that affect your ability to sell into the Internet? Is that, in fact, true? Are they, are they excited to talk to someone who's traditionally produced for television and converting to the Internet? And, and then secondarily, once you've sort of found that thing, do you follow the same path as Dick to monetize it, or do you look elsewhere? Yeah, I think, I think you know, Broadway Video being a, we come at it from more of a production company or, or studio point of view, where um, we tend not to deal with the advertisers so much straight up as would maybe a Dick or, or even um, Drew with Electus. So we tend to more start with our writers and put stuff out there. Mm -hmm. And then uh, a recent example is this uh, digital series we did, uh, Seven Minutes in Heaven, with a writer uh, from SNL, Mike O'Brien, where <clears throat> he had a concept where you, you know, awkwardly interview celebrities in the closet and you're right up in their face and then he tries to make out with them at the end. And <laughs> most of the people turn away and whatever. So we, we put it out initially on, on Hulu and on uh, YouTube and we produced it for price and, and frankly we didn't have much expectation we just wanted to support our writer and start getting stuff out there and it, it got quite a bit of views and then ultimately that led to uh, a deal that we did recently with Yahoo for a next bunch of them and now you know without saying what the dollar amount is it's we'll do pretty well on that and Yahoo ultimately would then uh, as a funnier die would be they will handle the advertising part of it um, not to say we won't deal with, uh, or, or would never deal with, or don't deal with the advertisers directly. It's just st sort of not the core of what we do. We try to focus on making stuff. Got it. And um, Evan, you're the, well, you're the one distributor on stage. So all these guys want to be able to sell you shows and then say, hey, we want to own the rights, we want to participate in the rights. You're sort of the, you know, the, the, the new guy and everyone's saying, wait, th this is great. There's someone with a new comedy brand in the cable business. We want to sell to him. Plus. You know, everyone likes you and you think you're funny. That's right. So, um, with, all that, with all that in your favor, you would really solve a lot of problems for all of us content producers in CA because we, we work on their behalves. If you just said, sure, you know, we'll let you, you know, take those rights, license them internationally. So the question to you is, one, is that ever possible? Two, is there an international marketplace for shows like Portlandia or whatever else uh, you see coming? And uh, is the alternative just, hey, let's have a great television show and then have, you know, have a Netflix sale or a Hulu sale for some material back end? No. <laughs> <laughs> great answer. <laughs> 
Um, uh, first of all, I want to uh, really please, <laughs> please, <laughs> pretty please. No, I didn't tell you um, no there is. Uh, you know, first of all, I want uh, two bones to pick with you. First of all, it's never seven minutes long. Mm. It's always like three minutes long. That would be too very long. funny. <laughs> and two, to, is that that's Lauren's closet, so he takes that off on his taxes. <laughs> <too, so laughs> yeah, exactly. Way smaller. Very it's actually closet. a very, very, very funny uh, series. Um, it, it is possible, and we do hybrids all the time um, with with with, uh, um, with producers. There's a couple different things. For all the talk of uh, web video, and and there's no disrespect intended for anybody who's making web video, the lion's share of making a comedy brand successful has to run through television at some point, uh, I believe. Um, especially if, if you're working in in uh, in in cre working with creators who want to get their work seen. Um, but you know, the the, because there's the dual revenue stream of advertising and cable affiliate fees, and now that's true for the broadcasters as well, you're talking about billions of dollars of available revenue that can get pumped back into the content in a way that is very difficult on most other platforms, whether it's mobile or, or digital or, or online. Um, and, and now, um, there was a report just this last week um, that said that with TV Everywhere, which is the authentication of content, through the cable operators, um, you know, platform online, um, Com Comcast and Disney just signed a, a kind of gargantuan deal for a decade for this type of thing. There's going to be an additional 12 or 13 billion dollars of revenue generated each year from that same content that runs on television networks. So you're now you're talking about hundreds of billions of dollars a year in available um, uh, revenue, and really what that revenue is is you know goes to the shareholders to a great degree, but it goes back into the content. So when you're talking about developing the next generation of comedies in video, um, television is really going to be, and specifically cable television, is going to be at the hub of it because that's where the money comes from. Um, so we're primarily interested in generating, doing something that makes us a must carry. So Portlandia went from being a, a cute little web series called Thunder Ant. You realize if you say something good, we're going to ask for more money next yeah. year. So you've got to be careful about <laughs> right? what you're saying. Um, to being, this is being taped. To being a cultural, you know, a, a bit of a cultural, I'm not going to say icon, but it's, it's become a part of the gestalt. Um, and now when we go back in to negotiate with a cable operator, which we constantly in negotiation with cable operators, we have something that is, with at least to a certain audience, very, very important, a passion point. Um, and that makes it very important. So we're primarily interested in the advertising revenue and the affiliate revenue. So if someone comes to the table and offers to deficit finance a show, Whisker Wars is a really good example. So this is a show uh, produced by the genius Tom Beers. Um, it's a half an hour, uh, I call it docucom, about competitive beard growing. I shit you not. <laughs> <laughs> and this is, this is real life, and it's very funny, and he made it economically viable for us to not own the back end rights, meaning it was very inexpensive to us, it got on air very quickly, and then the cost per thousand people watching the show is lower than probably anything else that we do. So it depends. You know, with Broadway Video, we have an interesting licensing deal where we fund a decent portion of the budget. Um, and then we co-own some of the rights on the back end. Um, with uh, Todd Margaret, um, it's a co-production with RDF, and the rights are mixed up. With other shows like Comedy Bang Bang, which is a new show with us, we wholly own everything because we're wholly financing everything. So there, it, is, it is negotiable, depending and, on the episode. And is there an international market? I mean, do you, do you plan for revenues that will come from somewhere beyond the United States? Well, the, I think the greatest thing that ever happened to video content, specifically television, is that there are now more buyers than there have ever been. Yeah. Um, so the, the death of home video, which I think we all feared, um, has been better than replaced, at least from my perspective, between EST on, on iTunes and the SVOD, which is uh, Netflix and, and now Hulu and Amazon is working on Prime. Um, the international market, and, 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 and Jack and Drew can talk about this much better than I can, for comedy is not great. It isn't, it isn't great until and unless you get to a volume. So we made, we've made 50 episodes of Whitest Kids You Know. That's now generating a decent and reliable revenue stream for us because there's 50 of them. Right. Same thing with Dinner for Five. There's 50 of them. Yep. So once you get to that critical mass, then it's a little bit easier to generate revenue. Or if you become, you know, if you're friends or two and a half men, I'm sure there's a, there's a decent <laughs> revenue. But you, I don't think it's reliable. The good news is between Netflix, uh, iTunes, Google, YouTube, 
uh, Amazon and Hulu, there's actually, you can count that in your business model uh, in a way that you never could on DVD sales. Good. So to, to switch topics, and hopefully this leads to an argument between Drew and, and Dick, um, and some sort of rupture in your friendship would be ideal. Um, I know, Dick, specifically, you guys said we're not even going to participate in the YouTube channel auction. And Funny or Die made a clear decision not to be there for a number of business reasons. I think you guys have 50 of the 100 YouTube channels, 75. something like that. 75. Uh, but four, is that the right number? Three uh, or four? Three. three. Uh, so that's a big commitment, and you obviously believe in that, and your financial backers believe in that. So why? Why would, why well, would you make that? Think, like, why why is Drew wrong? Well, he must be. I'm never wrong, but um, the, the reality is, is that it, Dick and I have talked about this, and it's not, it's, what we're doing in these three channels, we're creating a brand. Okay. It's, it's about using the financing from YouTube to create a new brand, to create new content, and, and hopefully, ultimately, create a new network channel of the future. Um, and with the financing we get, you know, it's something that, therefore, then we, we pay back, and then we do a split, ultimately, down the line. I don't know if it works for somebody who already has a brand, and we've talked about that, uh, because if you already have your brand, I don't know, the financing that you have to date is what should drive what you need. And, and, and with that, there are certain... Um, uh, exclusivity that goes around partnering with uh, with YouTube in terms of these channels, but for us, when we're starting these three new brands um, that we have, one is in um, Hispanic, one is uh, Hispanic pop culture. We have another one in pop culture, and a third one in food category. Um, where our our whole excitement is creating these new brands and content that will speak to those brands. So uh, for us, we we are also looking at this to say. This isn't just you know, a, a YouTube one-off. We're looking at this as Google as a whole, that YouTube is a, a doorway in, that ultimately there are different platforms that you have with Google, whether it's Google TV, whether it's Android phone, that this is content, video content that we're producing that could live on these different platforms. So uh, ultimately, we look at this, we're investing alongside of these channels because we are expecting it to be ultimately a long-term game. Now, Dick, because you're such a nice guy, you're probably going to say, Drew's right, and it didn't work for Just Funny or Die. Did I just steal your thunder? Did you have uh, something more controversial to say? Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I <laughs> agree, agree completely with Drew, and, and I think what's really relevant is I think that with all of this new source of production dollars that exist, <clears throat> not just YouTube, but Hulu is into the original programming with a big budget, Amazon is getting into it with a big budget. Netflix has been in it for a while, etc. Um, that it's a, gr it's all you know. What's the deal? Yeah. And the deal that Google YouTube offered up was fantastic for somebody who needed money to build their brand, to build their programming, to pay for it. It was a terrible deal for somebody who also was already making money with their programming and their channel, if you will. And, and so that's why we didn't participate. Now, full disclosure, we did offer a whole different idea to them that had nothing to do with the Funny or Die brand, and they were very pleased to reject it. They didn't think it was a very good idea. Um, and, and so I would be uh, deceiving everyone if I said I didn't see this as an opportunity for uh, producing and distributing, because the other part that, that comes with it is, uh, what did they say today? They do 400 billion video a lot, a lot. You know, they can get your content viewed. Yeah. And, and that's not an insignificant yeah. uh, thing to offer people. Right. I, think, I think that's why you have to be there from a talent perspective and writer perspective. It really offers you a chance to not only discover people early, but to build brands and awareness for writers or talent that otherwise would have difficulty getting on the radar. I mean, even a our Chronicles of Narnia or, or Lazy Sunday years ago, which kind of was, was one of the things that helped uh, push YouTube into more mainstream awareness. I mean, <clears throat> to my knowledge, we never got any check in the mail for that. But, um, <laughs> but where it did help us was it, it helped launch SNL Digital Shorts. It helped launch a movie that, I mean, nobody saw it, but Hot Rod, I where saw. they got it green lit just on the popularity of that you know, short mm -hmm. on YouTube. That was where the awareness came from at the studio. Your agents always watch those movies. Yes, exactly. Okay. So, <laughs> and, you know, for the guys, uh, uh, the Lonely Island guys, it certainly enabled them to do a lot of things with commercials, their individual careers. Um, and likewise, we think the same um, with the different people that we're trying to build up and we have relationships with. It's, it's going to work in our favor, and it's a space that's important to be in for that reason. 
So, Jack, I'm going to bring something up that's going to make you mad at me because we should have been there helping you. But you first you did Lazy Sunday. I think it's fair to say that really launched YouTube. Um, you know, nine months later, they were sold. Then it turns out SNL is driving Hulu through very difficult times and is by far the biggest driver of revenue, and, and, and we know that that's real. Yeah. Um, and now we've got Evan telling us how valuable Portlandia is. We've got to stop <laughs> building these channels for other people, which, breaks, which takes me back to the next question, which is, why are we doing it? I mean, Evan, you're building a great brand. You've done a fantastic job. You know, Comedy Central is worth a lot of money. Um, to say the least, is there is there an opportunity for this ecosystem to emerge such that someone other than YouTube or Hulu, but a new independent brand, maybe it's IFC, steps into a pretty big void? Uh, and and do you think it can be a cable channel or it'll end up being someone online? I mean, I, I I think Dick proved that. I mean, yes, is the answer to that. There's there's definitely a room if somebody can step to the fore and and create a strong comedy brand where reliably every day you're going to get something funny. I think that will do well, and yeah. that can be online, and it can be, and it can be on air. Um, as far as a, a cable channel, it's more likely going to be a flip. Um, you know, IFC was almost exclusively uh, independent films, and our original content, my first three years, was all dedicated to making documentaries. Uh, and then I realized uh, the same thing about documentaries that I learned about theater when I worked in theater, which is there's no money in it. <laughs> um, so. Um, uh, we, we really, we had this audience of uh, really smart, we call them responsible rebels, upscale, um, not huge, but really strong and passionate, and we asked them what they wanted to see, and in inevitably, every single one of them said comedy. They like Quentin Tarantino, they like action films, they like independent films, they like, you know, comic books, but the, the universal thing that they said that they wanted to see more of, that they didn't see on TV, was weird, offbeat comedy. And the show that they always mentioned was Arrested Development. Um, and so we actually went out and licensed Arrested Development at, along with <coughs> Freaks and Geeks and Larry Sanders and Mr. Show, and we put them on air, and then we relaunched the channel with Portlandia and The Onion and a couple of other uh, uh, things. And very quickly, a year later, literally, almost exactly, here we are, and we're now a pretty well-recognized comedy brand. Are we taking down Comedy Central? No, but I think the, the level of passion that our audience has for us is, is, is deeper in many respects than a broad band like that. So I think my long-winded answer is yes, if you have a really good thesis, if you know what kind of comedy you want to do mm -hmm. as opposed to just all kinds, um, you can really develop a really strong brand with the audience. And you don't, the best part of it is, with the fragmentation of video viewing, the, the, the television viewing, television is not a box and prime time is not a time slot. Time, prime time is a quality. And television is an emotional experience between a storyteller and an audience. And I think if you keep those things in mind and realize that nobody's watching the same thing at the same time, it's totally asymmetrical, and you pick a segment of the audience that you're gonna super serve, there's profit. You don't have to be all things to all people. You don't have to be mass. You can be niche, you can be smart, you can be clever, whatever it is, as long as you go hard at that and create an exchange of values between you and your audience that is profitable for you. Yeah, and I think we're all, we're all rooting for that to happen and um, you know, to, to have another really large distributor that you're building, so that's, that's great for everyone on the stage. But getting, getting back to the internet, um, let's talk a little bit about talent because of the cost of internet production. Um, you know, in, in each case, whether it's Electus, um, Jack, your productions, and, and Dick most famously with, with Will and Adam and, and endless uh, Hollywood stars appearing in short stuff on Funny or Die. How do you do that? How do you uh, motivate talented and funny people to participate in content uh, on such small budgets and knowing that you're going to be transparent about you know, the difficulty of a return? I mean, from my point of view, it's actually pretty easy because for, for our writers and our talent, to be able to come to me with an idea that otherwise wouldn't necessarily be a full, you know, television idea, um, and be able to do it and be able to do it with speed, that's a big deal to them because if, if you go through the typical cable development process, and, and thankfully with IFC it was a, a very fast one with Portlandia, but typically you could spend, you know, a year or two years just trying to set up a pilot, get something in production, wait for a series order which may or may not go, and all the while you could be tied up even in all media or exclusivity while you're trying to do this. So uh, for us to be able to give them the support 
to produce something and make something within a few weeks that they want to do creatively, then bring them on as more of a, pa a partner on the back end. That's significant and that's interesting to them, not only creatively, but as an entrepreneur, because it's rare that you get those, um, uh, those opportunities in traditional television or e even cable television. And Drew, how does, um, through College Humor, and given all the, you know, your fashion star comes out very shortly and there's tremendous opportunity for you, so people know you're producing big broadcast network shows, and then you gotta go back into the same room and say, hey, we're doing, <coughs> under, we're doing this under a very different economic structure. How does that work? Well, it's, it's, it depends. I think a lot of times if you look at um, when we do things with talent, um, at the end of the day, on the digital landscape, it has to be funded by advertising. And um, that's, therein lies the, the issue that we started this panel off with is, you know, it has to be about the content. So, you know, when we do things with College Humor, or we do things with Will and Jason in terms of different forms of content that we know ultimately may get funded by a brand, it can never be, for example, that, hey, we got a great pitch for Bradley Cooper, Bradley Cooper's gonna be great in it, we're gonna do it for Bradley Cooper, and you know, and all of a sudden Radio Shack sponsors it. It, it can't be that, it's gotta be, here's a great idea, and we're gonna go do it, Radio Shack may wanna be in. If Bradley wants to do it or doesn't wanna do it, it's fine, it's just he can't, we, it can't be he's the critical part that moves it, because that falls into the world of endorsement and everything else. Mm -hmm. um, and that's always the tricky line you fit. It's gotta be about the content and the, the experience, and what Jack said is like, if people get excited about it and wanna be invested in it early on, it's always great because you can rapidly you know, go out and test it and there's nothing better than just doing a sketch or something like that, throwing it up online, seeing how it you know, views and notes and everything else. But it's, uh, it's definitely, you know, it's, it's not as clear cut to always say the talent want to just jump in without there being some, some rules around. And can, before I, can, I, can I just disagree yeah. with one thing? Yeah. Uh, the, the, there, in the last 18 months, there's been another way to do it, which is Netflix paid so they picked up the next 10 episodes of Arrested Development mm -hmm. exclusively. Yeah. No advertising involved at all. And they, pay, you know, we were mentioned as being interested in it in the press. Um, I will say that, you know, from what I understand, they paid substantially more than anyone else was going to pay. Mm -hmm. um, and substantially more than even Broadcast Network would pay for a yeah. half an hour uh, content. Which is good for content creators. I mean, we're yeah. seeing that with Netflix and Hulu, with, with our existing catalog of stuff Shh. like SNL. Don't uh, pull the goof and, lid. <laughs> and also, uh, also with original series where yeah. you know, Hulu and Netflix are aggressively stepping up. So, it's so there, there may be another angel to go to rather than, if, I mean, I think, I guess the message I would send is if you have a great <laughs> idea for an original comedy, especially if it has a name attached to it, you can you could probably go to one of those players and get and get funding for it in a way that yeah. eliminates having to go to the advertiser first. Right. So and uh, Dick, how do you how have you guys managed to do such an extraordinary job of appealing to such great uh, talented people? And and it is by offering them value in in a different way than traditionally they may they may be offered and and that again we're now just talking about. Uh, digitally and the, and the website as opposed to TV shows or mm -hmm. something like that. And, and there, the first thing we give them is absolute creative freedom to do whatever the hell they want. You know, sit down with us, what do you want to do? You want us to help you write something you don't, whatever it is. It's, it's, and, and no notes. There's, you know, we may, if you want input, great. Is that by choice or you're just lazy? No, that's, can't get around. Uh, that's, that's uh, a combination of both. Okay. Um, second, it's a platform to promote to a great audience. And, and that often, you know, we're now one of the stops on the promotional tour. Go to the Today Show, do a Funny or Die video, show up on Conan or whatever. Um, so that third is it's a, a chance for people to do things they don't get to do every day that they may have a reason to do it. Why? They want to show they can actually be funny or they have a cause that they want to cleverly do a way to get, get it in front of people. And, and again, we give that platform to them uh, to be able to do that. And the last is it's absolutely risk-free, which these people, especially when you get to be an A-lister, Risk is the scariest thing in the world for them. Do a movie that bombs and it doesn't matter you did three that were successful. Your next one had better be good. Yeah. Well here, if it works, oh my God, did you see the video so-and-so did? If it fails, it's a shitty little internet yeah. video that nobody cared about. So there's no risk.
And is that part of the selling proposition? You make them feel comfortable around that? Yeah, and we don't do much selling. In other words, we're not begging people, please come work with them. We don't identify a talent and say, oh, we got to go do a video with them. M much more, it's the reverse. But is that, I mean, that's a testament to the company you built. I imagine for people not on this stage who are building comedy-driven businesses in other conference rooms here today, they are going out and pitching. And they're saying the same thing. You know, and when it comes to an agency or an attorney, they're going, well, that promotion's not that great. So I wonder, you know, if you're just in a unique position given the brand you built. Evan, I don't know if you have any thoughts. I, well, I, I think so every, everybody has some assets to sell. I think, yeah. I think you know, know, in the last yeah. couple of weeks, I've seen both. The, the only thing I've ever seen Catherine Heigl in, I saw on Funny or Die. Yeah. And she was very funny. And so, so she was able to kind of basically rebrand herself in a video about yeah. balls um, <laughs> that in a way that I went, wow, she actually has a sense of humor and that and so there, it's yeah. I think there are a bunch of talent out there recasting themselves a, as comedy performers using Funny or Die as a, as a platform. I think it's also in the DNA of your company with Will and McKay, like people just know it's right, a company same. by creative people who are comedians right. and it's sort of and, understood. And, that that's and we are story. absolutely, we, we talk about it all the time, we are to just totally committed to talent wherever it is, whether it's a aspiring writer just starting or it's an A-list movie star to have a great experience with us that we and, and we do things which may not be in our short-term economic interest necessarily but we do it because if we can create that environment we will have more people want to work there do better work etc and and that we're more proud of the number of people that have done two three four things a great example you know Billy Crystal not normally your demographic of, you know, the young audience that had an idea of something he wanted to do. His kids, actually, were the ones that knew us and said, ah, go do it with him. So we did a video with him, and it did very well, and it was fine. He's hosting the Oscars. They're back up one step. We also did Because he did the video with you. No, no. <laughs> okay, but Ron Howard also did a video with okay. us, with, and imagine Brian Grazer. They're, he's hosting the Oscar, Ron's helping him, Brian Grazer, I guess, is producing some of it. They're sitting around a room, what can we do to try and make the Oscars more relevant? Oh, hey, funny or die, we had this great week. So they came to us, we produced the trailer that's in theaters now for the Oscars. We're doing a series of videos that will start coming out in the next couple of weeks. Right. And again, the important thing is because they had, those are obviously top of the line A-list people who had a great experience with us. It served their goals, so they want to come back and do more. And fortunately, the Academy and ABC have a much larger budget than we're used to playing with. That's good. <laughs> so just so we can make sure we take a couple questions, I just want to ask you guys to comment on what's sort of next for your companies and what's next in this space and, and how this sort of you know, new digital landscape helps the comedy business and what it means for yours. So maybe, Evan, you can start off. I'll start with the end of that first. Um, a lot of our shows, many of our shows, have started as web series. So Thunder Ant was a web series. We're doing a show with Scott Aukerman, who uh, co-created Between Two Ferns. Um, and, and, and it started as a, as a podcast, actually, on, on Funny or Die, called Comedy Bang Bang. So we're using the space and we, you know, we've done some very interesting things in this space, including, you know, syndicate uh, trapped in the closet a couple of years ago. Um, so we're using the space less as a as a as a revenue generator and much more as a development tool. We are looking at these channels. We're looking at our own channels. We are looking at the at the web and the digital platform as a way to discover new talent, discover new programs, and that's really become a big part of our of our. Um, of our development strategy. What's next for us? Um, we have a, a, a talk show that's not a talk show called Comedy Bang Bang with Scott Ackerman, and that's in June. We have a game show that's not a game show uh, called Bunk. Um, that's with Kurt Brownoller, and that's, imagine, uh, I don't know if you remember the show, Remote Control. Sure. Yeah. If you take Remote Control and Whose Line Is It Anyway and get really stoned, that's Bunk. <laughs> um, not that I have ever done that. Um, <laughs> And then this summer, we have actually a really interesting, uh, really cool series called Bullet in the Face, which is a co-producer with Just for Laughs um, in Canada. It was shot in Canada. Really interesting economic model. We've got uh, Eddie Izzard and, um, and Eric uh, Roberts playing dueling mob bosses uh, in a Tarantino-like comedy. 
Uh, and then uh, in the fall, we have the return of uh, uh, Whisker Wars. Uh, we'll be doing, I hope, uh, more episodes of Portlandia. That's been a really great uh, show for us. It's been a great partnership. And the concept is, you know, five years from now, to have a network that is known for a specific brand of comedy. Um, when you, 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 may not, you may not know exactly what you're going to expect, but you know that it's all going to be of the same whole. Um, and we, f we feel that we're well on that way um, uh, with the st shows that we have on right now. That's great. Dick? For us, it's an election year. So, yeah. you know, we'll just continue to make fun of candidates uh, of both parties all year long. The gifts that keeps on giving, right? Yeah, no, it's fantastic. Um, we just have to, it's just... It would have been nice if some of the best characters had been able to hang in a little longer right. you know, for us, but we, you know. Luke's working for you. Yeah. Herman Cain will be with us. He's going to become a, a right, Mike, regular contributor. Right. Mike Tyson played will, by will Mike continue. Tyson. Yeah. That's uh, absolutely. Um, so, anyway, but, but, uh, so there'll be more of the same in essence is what I'm, I'm, I'm really saying that um, we have, uh, we haven't talked about, but on the TV side, a, a show that has done fantastically well on Fuse called Billy on the Street, that we're just going to get back and start producing. They just picked up 12 more episodes of that that uh, we need to produce. We'll have our third season on HBO that uh, will go into production shortly. Um, we've got a couple pilots. Um, Friday night, Tim and Eric's billion dollar movie premiered at Sundance. It will be available this Friday. Uh, on VOD, so everybody go buy it, um, whether from your cable operator, your satellite dish, or iTunes or Amazon. Um, that would be nice, and we're working on a, uh, another film. Um, and we're looking at uh, potentially some new products um, for uh, uh, mobile and tablet that we're actually pretty excited about. Great. Jack? Well, it's an election year for, uh, for us, too, with SNL, so I think that'll... Uh, Is Sarah Palin running again this year? Uh, yeah, I, I wish. I wish that would be the case. But, uh, you know, so we're going we're gonna to focus on continuing to grow our TV business. And, um, and also, you know, in the digital space, I think the biggest thing for us is we have a slate of more things coming out with more of our young writers in particular and talent. And we're excited to, uh, to build up, you know, build on those projects and get more good stuff out there. And then we'll see where it goes. It's hard to say what the perfect strategy is right now. There's so many things going on that I think for us the key thing is just to focus on what I think we do best, which is to cultivate our writer and talent relationships and make the best stuff we can and then, and then we'll see where it goes. True. Yeah, I think for us we're trying a lot of different formats too. I mean, um, <clears throat> or late last year we did something with uh, College Humor where Jake and Amir, which is their kind of signature talent that they had, um, which do two to five minute shorts as a series. Um, extended it out for 30 minutes and actually sold it through iTunes, through Facebook credits and DVD sales and actually got great results. So we're, we're going to look more in terms of launching original to see if there are commerce ways. Um, you know, we're excited about the YouTube. We also have a, a couple of Yahoo shows going on that we partnered with this uh, great management firm, Principato Young, which is really core in, in comedy. So we're doing a lot of that. And, you know, uh, as well in the international marketplace, we're looking for interesting formats that, uh, that have worked internationally that we then can take and package. You know, Ben has had tremendous experience in what he did with The Office, obviously, and we just announced something doing with TV Land with Zanzuri and Israeli format uh, that we're excited about that we just packaged with TV Land. So we're, we're touching a lot of different things in TV and digital and in subscription, so. Great. Uh, so I have a couple minutes left. Are there any questions? Both at the same time. It's a press conference. <laughs> Sorry. So I have a natural interest in comedy, but at WPP, there is a, uh, a natural internal reaction of, oh, comedy, not ad safe, not big enough audiences, not specific enough audiences, not uh, deep enough consistent engagement. So you'll go back and change that yeah, argument yeah, for us? Exactly. So help me, to, help me to explain that to uh, my colleagues. And, uh, and to help my son so he should be able to make a living in this business. <laughs> it's a quid pro quo, I think. But, uh, I, I, think I, I think you have to, you have to it has to be the, the right match of, of a brand and, and, and content. So we just did a, a really 
I think, very funny integration in Portlandia, um, where Subaru, two cars are basically the characters in, in, in the ske sketch. It's uh, Fred and Carrie at an intersection, one in one Subaru and the other in the other, and they sit there for about three and a half minutes going, no, you go. No, you go. And it's a very funny bit. It's, went vi it's gonna go viral online. Um, and I was watching on Friday night on, on, while it was on Twitter, you know, it was on TV and I was watching the Twitter feed, a little bit nervous about what the reaction of the audience was gonna be. Like, here's an obvious product integration. And they loved it. And the people said, that's the perf... Actually, my favorite tweet of the night was, Subaru, the perfect brand for Portlandia. And that's right, because if you look at the Subaru commercials, they're all very earthy, crunchy, and very yeah. cool, and they match very well. Um, the stuff that Jack and, and, and Broadway Video have done inside 30 Rock, I think, are, you know, with Snapple and some of the others, are the, are the, you know, the, the gold standard of brand integration. So I don't agree that comedy and, and advertising don't mix. I think you just have to have the right the brand fit. and the right content. Yeah. I would also say that I'm not encouraging you to get your son into writing for a living. <laughs> I, I would say that um, what I'm seeing now um, in terms of the, the format that, um, that uh, young people have to create stuff relatively inexpensively and put it online and get discovered is something that, uh, you know, even three, four years ago you wouldn't have seen. So even for Late Night with Jimmy Fallon re recently, uh, um, a young writer named, uh, his name's Dan Upsells, had written creative stuff and then um, they saw it, they liked it, and now he's a, a significant writer, producer on the show all within the time span of like a year. And that would have been something uh, that would have been difficult to pull off a while ago. So I think, I think in terms of, of that, it's encouraging for people who otherwise, you know, would have been hard to get discovered. And, and it really is a, a great opportunity to be a young person interested in, in in this case comedy because if you work hard and do good work it can get made now it yeah. can get seen, seen yeah. that yeah. that couldn't happen five even just five years ago yeah. and and we see it all the time and um, again you know wait tables at night the proverbial things you have to do to actually it's hard to make money right off the bat but boy if you've got talent you will you will be discovered if you keep working at it. And Drew, you want to finish up uh, here? Yeah, no, I, I think on the advertising piece, I, I think you'd be surprised. I mean, you know, I'd go back to that example of Denny's is that, you know, their demo, as we all probably understand, is definitely on the uh, 50 and above. But when we did this uh, talk show set in the Denny's with Sarah Silverman, Amy Poehler, Will, Jason, um, uh, and others, it really kind of brought it into the masses. And actually, there was proof that showed that they're, you know, in store, they had younger demos showing up. But if you even looked at the comments, people were like, oh my God, Jason, I, I never knew you'd get a salad at Denny's. That's interesting. And that was, uh, that was actually something that got them really excited about continuing on just to see the reaction and the, and the, the pure qualification and quantification of it. Um, and on the other thing with Dick, it's like, I think on the, on the talent, it's, it's got to be, you got to keep on being consistent because I think what, what we've all seen on the digital, it's like, unless you keep harnessing and, and putting it up and being consistent, it, it kind of fades. And that's something that uh, I think that everybody should definitely, you know, if you've got um, something, a one-off doesn't work, it's something that you've got to consistently build and grow. So, so um, just to wrap it up, I think we've talked about a lot of different models domestically, internationally. It seems none of that matters. It doesn't matter what's in the spreadsheet unless you are funny. Uh, and you can make funny content. So it's great to, to get that point of view from uh, a distributor and, and three great production companies uh, and media companies that have done that for a long time. So thank you guys very much. Have a good day. Thank you.